this walk we're going to explore the square mile that Wainwright lays out in the Castle Crag chapter. He describes this as the loveliest square mile in the lakes. We start this walk in a small car park outside of Grange. After going through the village, we work our way alongside the river and up to the Millican Dalton Caves. There we explore before moving back down to the river again and then completing the ascent up to Castle Crag. We go through the slate at the top, admire the views and then work our way back down the path. Here I've included an option to go through the woods. We work our way along the river and then across the bridge to Rostwaite. We go through the village, passing the pigs towards the Bowder Stone. After exploring the Bowder Stone, we find our way back to the village of Grange. So, this is all within the same square mile of the Borrowdale Valley and it's a great family walk. So, if you're in Keswick or nearby, you can get the bus to here. It just takes to the bus stop there just behind me. And we're going to walk our way into Grange and then up to Castle Crag, which is just up there. Brought Alison with me today. She doesn't want to be on the camera, but then complains she's not on the camera enough. <laughs> <laughs> the magnolia tree there getting out in blossom. Just as you come in the village, there's a National Trust car park just here, so you can't get that free one. Just bob in here, just for local amenities. There's a uh, toilet stop just behind me, should you wish to uh, get yourself ready for mounting. And before we take the walk up, there is this cafe slash bar. You can get a, a beer in there if you wish. When you get to this cafe here, we're just going to take the uh, public by the way, and it's that one. As you're coming out of the village, just draw level to the River of Derwent, which is just there, and we'll follow that a little bit along. I was actually here yesterday, it was pretty busy, but uh, I think it's a bit quieter today because it's forecast a little bit of rain, but it's not going to put me off. Oh, Alison is there. <laughs> there she is, there's Alison. Making a point now. <laughs> <laughs> As you're walking just down this road, and it's about a kilometre or so down this road, at the side you've got this, and if you're wondering what this range is here, uh, that is the Newlands watershed, so it starts off at Cat Bells and then Maidenmore and then High Spy, and then when you get to the peak of Castle Crag, which is just up there, then you're looking onto High Spy, but you can't see the top of it, it's just behind over there. Just as we're going down this road then, it's just come into view. So that is Castle Crag, just there. Uh, at this point when you hit the bend, we're going to turn off and then just go that way towards it. That's the way. So from here, it's uh, one and three quarter miles to Castle Crag. Just on this side, that's Grange Fell, where I was yesterday actually when I did this mountain as well. Uh, but I just wanted to come back and fill in a bit more detail because I couldn't get around everything like the caves yesterday. So if you want to see that video with Grange Fell on, just have a look at that after this. I follow the river round, and actually in the Wainwright books he says this is an absolutely fantastic walk. And the reason we're following it around is because the caves are on this side. So if you go to the caves first and then go up to the top, or Castle Crag, then we'll work our way round to um, the Bowder Stone. There is a bridge there, but you can also just go across here if you want to. <laughs> I came across here yesterday, but today, to be honest, I'm going to take the bridge. The river, if you're going in it, it's not actually that deep, uh, so it's good for canoes if you want to do that. It's just quite broad, but it is fast flowing. Yeah, there's that first bridge, then there's a the second bridge as well. So you can go over that second bridge there also. Or you can just take your chances over those rocks. But again, that's pretty wide, so I'm going to hit the bridge. So where I am now, it's uh, Low House Wood, and if you go straight up on 
that path there, which is the wrong path that Alison's going up there, uh, that takes you to High House, but we actually want to take this path here. I'm going to take this one today along the riverbank. Alison! <laughs> This is a very well trodden path, as in it's like quite well designed, quite heavily. That's the walking surface, so pretty decent. I've got some new shoes on today because uh, I'm going to Spain soon to do some walking there. And it does feel a little bit weird. I'm used to clomping around in my boots. This is the river walk, and it is really great. I wasn't expecting this actually. The river's looking pretty clear. Sort of pass. And to get over here. These are the new trainers, well, shoes. I think it says the waterproof, but <laughs> that's yet to be seen. Not reviewing gear, by the way. I don't review it until I've used it for absolutely ages. If you're doing this walk, I've just passed through a wall behind me. Uh, we're going to turn off the caves quite soon, so just be wary of that. If you are doing this walk, just let me know, because uh, I'd like to see who's done it. And tell me what your thoughts of it, put it in the comments. We're going to get to the Millican Dalton Caves in a sec. What it is, it's a cave where he actually lived for quite a long period of time, you know, mainly in the summer months but he lived there, it's, he called it the Cave Hotel. And he's quite an interesting character. He was there in the sort of wartime period and classed himself as a professor of adventure. From the cave, he used to give hiking expeditions and make a few quid taking people climbing. But yeah, very interesting character. So he lived in the cave for many, many months at a time and at one point got told off during the war by uh, an air raid warden. They came round because he had an open fire in the cave and they came and complained about it. <laughs> Obviously he's a bit annoyed so he wrote a letter to Winston Churchill about it and to be honest fair enough if the uh, Luftwaffe are flying over and they see a light on a cave in a hillside well if they bomb it they're only going to injure him because the village will be safe, so yeah, fair dues. Now then, we have got to this point here, and it's pretty notable if you walk in it, you'll spot it. And then we're gonna work our way up to the cave, so we're gonna go that way now. I feel quite warm, so I've just come out in this, really, and my uh, merino wool top. It's pretty hot, to say hot, it's about 10 degrees, but it's the uh, last week of winter, so the lake's gonna get busy pretty quick. So even though it's raining, just get out because, you know, got a waterproof, so it'll be fine. All right, this is the trek up to the cave. Whoop, it's a bit of a waterfall. <laughs> I'll say these are new shoes. I'm not quite confident with the level of grip on them. They are quite grippy. It's just, I think, they're brand new, so. A little bit slippy. As I mentioned, that's Grange Fell, just on the other side there, I was up there yesterday. Uh, so this, where we are now, is classified as the Northwestern Fells. And that over there is classed as the Central Fells. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I wasn't quite expecting that. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it, I thought it'd be more of a climb. Here we go. Blimey. Is this it? Right, I thought that was it for a sec. This isn't the cave that we're after, but it is obviously part of the activity that was taken. I think it's part of the slate mining really, because you can see there's a quite built up wall there. So we're going a bit further up this path, and then we'll get our way to the cave we're after. That tree has come straight out of that rock though, look at that. Right, 
And as we come up, that's the cave just there. So we'll just work our way up. It's got as place as any to live. <laughs> All right. Now then, up here there's a plaque. I'll try and work out what it says. No fires. <laughs> right, I'm going to go in this. It's a pretty wet cave. Let's see what's going on here. To be honest, I could do it just getting out the rain. That's better. That's nice. I might live here. In this cave, if it's the right one. There we go. There's an upper part to this cave as well. Bottom part down here. And then this is the upper chamber. It's pretty dark though, so I've got to watch my fucking. Well. That's the upper part. Uh, I wouldn't wouldn't pick it as a Airbnb, but you know. There's definitely been a few people around here scratching the names into the rocks. And <laughs> look, I've just found an ancient cave drawing. Lovely. <laughs> In prehistoric times. Didn't felt it. So this is the Millican Dalton Cave. And the one at the top here is called the Upper Chamber. And that's where he slept. I know this is the right cave because it's some very specific graffiti that I was looking for. And it's not done in felt tip. <laughs> it's this one. It's actually carved into the rock. And it says, don't, exclamation mark, waste words, jump to conclusions. <laughs> now that is the consequence of an argument that he had with one of his friends that was staying here. And he was um, a non-drinker, he was a vegetarian, pacifist. So it wasn't a drunken argument, it was obviously a, a row about something. And the two contradictory statements in there are because that was coming up strongly in the argument. So his mate actually <laughs> felt so strongly about it, they've carved it into the rock before they've gone. That's the caves in the book and Wainwright's just said in there, the attic room, which is the upper chamber there, that is the one that he used to sleep in. So from here we're going to work our way around and we'll look at the second thing for today, which is the summit of Castle Crag. And once we've done that, we'll go to our third thing for today, which is the Bowder Stone. Right, let's get up there. The Millican Dalton Caves there behind me, and just so I can orientate you a little bit. This is the path we'd come up to get to it. And you can do a circular and just go straight back down that path, which is what we're going to do now. And then we'll work our way around the mountain, and then go up the other side of Castle Crag. This cave, I really thought it was going to be busy. I know it's raining today, which puts people off, but uh, I really thought it was going to be busy because I was at the caves in Loughrigg, near Ambleside, a little while ago, and that was absolutely rammed. So uh, yeah, check out that video if you want another small walk. That's a good one you can do in just a couple of hours. Uh, as you're coming down this bit, <coughs> it's a little bit slippy. There's quite a big rock face. Uh, and I've got to put my way down this. Oh, here's where we find out if these shoes are trusty or not. <laughs> so we go through this wall and then we're working our way round to the main path. So another little cave there as you come down. Let's have a little look at it. So right, so the few of these dotted around. And obviously they form caves because they're taking the slate out here. But want to keep that supported, that's my in it. There we go, so cave three. Oh, just coming out of that cave and just following the path around. It's a dead straight, you know, straightforward path. 
the kind of thing you see all over the Lake District on these low level walks. You cairns dotted about just in case you get lost on this very complicated fell. <laughs> The river goes back there and we're going to head up. If you watched this video, or the one I did yesterday, I worked my way up this path here, uh, which takes you through the woods a little bit. And it's a bit more challenging. So if you want to do that for fun, then just check out the other video. But the main path's just at the side here. So we're going to go up that one. And that's the one that most people will take up. Here we go. So you're going to go through this gate and then work your way up the main path there. The main path just goes up here. It just keeps on this side of the wall and yesterday I was going up on the other side of the wall. Either way it doesn't matter because you're going to end up at a very uh, slaty scree face. And that's the final zigzag as you go up so that's a little bit of a challenge that's the view looking back and if you come up on this path here that's the path to Rostwaite majestic rain's just coming in there all right we go up here it's actually pretty steep this uh, so it's a bit of a test, you will know you've done it by the time you get to the top. It's a pretty good staircase going up, it's easy enough to do, even on wet rocks. If your cows can take it. It is a bit tiring. Alright. It is pretty steep this. off a really good view is this so even though it's the smallest of all the Wainwrights it's still a cracking view look at that all right we're nearly at the top bit so we're gonna go through this wall here then we're on the slaty bit and to the top what you can see appearing here is sort of this side of high spy on the other side of the valley Once you've done the up, you get to this sort of grassy plateau area and the path's going to go this way. That's the actual summit though, just up there. Just going to have to work our way up that scrabbly stuff there behind the trees. Yeah. Sun's just hitting the village of Rostwaite there in the valley. That's Borodale Valley. It's not really surprising that uh, Wainwright considers it to be the best square mile in the whole of Lake District. If you're wondering, like I am, are these shoes waterproof? <laughs> They've done alright so far. Once you through that style, you'll find this massive pile of slate. <laughs> <laughs> and what we're going to do is you just zigzag up on this side to the top. It's quite steep but it's actually reasonably short. It's probably like 50 yards or something. What the hell is that? <laughs> Alison's delighted at the prospects oh, yeah. of climbing up this. It's amazing. <laughs> okay, here we go. The slate itself isn't particularly loose, it's all, it's all right I think. I mean, I'm not saying it's super stable, but <laughs> when I was going down um, the other week, when I was going down to Lord's Rake from Scarfell Pike, that was slippery. But this is actually pretty grippy, it's all right. Whoop. 
I'll just keep this on so I can show you the full length of this as you go up. So I've done two bends so far. Let's come up to the third. Still got the uh, view down the valley there to cheer you up. Woo! It's good. It looks like from the bottom it looks steep, but because of the zigzag, it's actually alright. Let's carry on going up. So bend four and as you come to here, that's the final bend and then the top. How are you doing? Amazing. How steep is it? Very steep. Very steep. Yes. <laughs> Alright, let's track up this final bit. Looking good. And as soon as we get up here, you can see the final little approach on this wooded bit. So here there's some buildings from the old mining activity. Uh, mining specifically on this part here. So that's uh, quite rough and you can see where they're taking out the chunk out the mountain. And then that is the Kern to give you a bit of a marker to look over Borodale Valley. All right. What do you think of that? <laughs> Let's get up the final ascent then. So here it is. It's a bit rooty and a bit rocky, but it's pretty straightforward to pick your way up. And on the top, which is just there, no one's there. Yesterday, there was about 20 people. So this is the sides of the quarry. Uh, there you go, that's that, it's a bit of a drop off. Okay, so this is the very summit. From here, you can see all the way down there to the lake. In the sort of middle distance, you can see the village we started from. And on the top here is the memorial to John Hammer. And it says Castle Crag was given to the National Trust in memory of John Hammer, second lieutenant, and killed in action. And that was during the First World War. The actual summit is just on top of this rock, so we're going to have to get up that. Uh, I'll show you something in the book in a minute because this used to be quite a built up cairn in Wainwright's day but it seems to have completely gone. Right, so that is the actual top. If you are looking at the Wainwright books, then this is the summit in the book. So obviously all this stuff on the top has disappeared in the meantime. But it looks like a little fort and 
There is evidence that this used to be actually a fortification because it is in a key strategic position if you're looking down there or looking all the way down the valley here. From here then we're going to work our way down uh, and then we will go to the Bowder Stone and that is a 2,000 ton stone <laughs> and I'll give you some of the theories on how it got there. There's only really one way on and off this so we're just going to straight back down here again. We've gone down that little rise, I'll just show you this bit just so you've seen it. Uh, this says standing stones on the map but there's not like any Neolithic standing stones or anything. It's just with a slight map. I think they mean this, like the way it's kind of going up. That's a little shelter on the top. And I think that's this shelter in the book. When Wainwright was doing this particular fell, <laughs> hasten to call it a mountain because it's so short, he tried to work out how tall it was because there was no official um, OS recognition of how high it was. So he worked it out and he reckoned it was about something like higher than 970 but between 980 and 990 so just short of a thousand feet and he worked it out and I'll show you the calculation in a sec but it's actually 951 to the top so you know from just looking at a mountain trying to estimate how tall it is it was you know within an oak tree's length of how tall it was so that is pretty impressive so this is actually what he's done in the book he's gone to Hideouts knows how, knows where that is. Castle Crag is measured there, um, and he's just measuring that six and a half miles to that rig. And he's tried to work out how big it is, and he's got it to within like 35 feet. So you know, that's pretty good. Yeah. So I'm going to head down to the Bowder Stone now via Rostwaite. So I'll show you how you get to there from here. We're going to go back through this zigzag and work our way down. Whoop. <laughs> way down here and then back along the river to Rosthwaite probably get a bite to eat there and then head round to the Bowderstone. The down is a bit trickier than the up I'll tell you that. Again. Those guys just finished at the top there. Uh, two of them were double amputees and other ones of them got other limbs missing so literally there's no excuse anyone can get up here if they're willing to do it so hats off to those guys uh, if you do want to go down just straight back to the car park from here this is the style we we're at before you just follow the river down there and that's a gentle walk back okay, but we're going to go to Rosthwaite and then down to the Bowderstone back over this style again hey. Just a group of dogs there having a picnic. <laughs> Hello. Uh, back through the wall. So I don't often do walks where I go back on the same ground, but in this one, I'm going to have to uh, just go back down the hill again in the same way. And it's purely because the river's here. So <laughs> I can only use the bridge at either one of the villages. So it's making this longer, but the actual Bowder stone is really just in the middle there. This descent is pretty easy because uh, it's just down the staircase again and it's pretty quick. But I'm just going to keep watching my feet because if I slip ever, it's when I'm going downhill. I'm nearly down again and we're hitting that gate. So, where we came from here before, we're now carrying on that way to Rosthwaite and we'll be going alongside the river just there. next to us here is the River Derwent. It's pretty fast flowing today. Now this bit is where we see how waterproof these shoes are. Because <laughs> that, there's no getting around that. Oh God. Don't like the look of that. <laughs> Great. <laughs> what are you doing? You get attacked by a <laughs> by a tree. <laughs> 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 
Is that Hazel beating you up? <laughs> yeah, good. Good <laughs> We're just down this path now to Rostwaite and the stepping stones are pretty much at the end of it. So it's a dead straightforward path. Borrowdale Valley there looking stunning. That's how fast the river is today. That's pretty hectic. Must have been putting down some rain yesterday. Yeah. Gonna ride the rapids. Oh go on mate. <laughs> go for it. Wow. <laughs> now the stepping stones are that thing that, that bird's just gone over. So <laughs> they're there. I guess on a <laughs> less wet day, you can get over there, but I'm not going over there today. We're just down this little path, and then the village is just there in front of us. Yeah, just as you're coming down here, you pass the farm, and in here, you've got some pigs. Ooh. You'll know when you're near them because of the smell. <laughs> okay, as far as there. Hello. There you go, just stopped in Rostwaite at the farm to get something. And this is a cheese scone and a bit of soup, spinach and pea. Mmm, <laughs> lovely. Mm. And you can just see in the distance there, that is Castle Crag. Oh, and there's the bus coming. <laughs> there's a little bus over there. That bus is pretty regular, so if you want to do this route at all, you can do it from here or, you know, uh, the other village, but that bus is pretty regular, so you can always get to it from Keswick. That was some good soup. Yeah, we could that. Never had a, uh, what was it? It's gone. No, it's gone, yeah. Never had a Easy scone with soup before, but really good. I'm just going to go down here. Oh, that bus is there again. <laughs> There's another National Trust car park here if you want to bring the car down to this village. So we're just going to hit the road and then head about halfway down and the Bowler Stone is just there. Right, okay, so this is the road again and we're just going to head down there. There's some walking down, it's obviously on the floodplain, so <laughs> that's how deep it can get. Uh, this is Castle Crag just up here. This is a path that's pretty narrow, uh, so I just, if you're doing this as adults, that's fine. It occasionally disappears though, so I wouldn't bring kids down here. Uh, but yeah, there is a bus. Right, this is the turn off I'm looking for. We're just going to go through this gate and then we get to the Bowder Stone just up here. Okay, there's your sign, the Bowder Stone. A short track up here and then we'll be there. The Bowler Stone itself, it's a uh, 2,000 ton piece of rock. It's uh, volcanic in nature. So it's oh, oh, a bit watery here. So it's uh, used to have a wooden ladder and that's been replaced. So now you've got this metal ladder going up it, the metal steps. It's obviously famous for obvious reasons. Uh, <laughs> look at that, it's just on its end. So really weird how it's just gone boom, on its end. And there's a little other stone, druid stone there, just to have a look at. So we'll pop up and check that out. But this is it, the Bowder Stone. Wow, it's actually, you can't really get a scale of it from pictures, but it's massive. Right. Let's have a look. It's a metal staircase going up. Oh. <laughs> Quite excited about this. All right then, on the top, just there now, this is what you get. And I'm gonna clamber the last bit. Uh, <laughs> It's very smooth because of all the boots that have been off it. 
There we go. Very smooth. Wow. All right. Yeah. That's it. That's the top of this micro summit, the Bowder Stone. All right, so that's the floor of it. It's very, very sort of smooth where people have been up before. Behind here, this is Bowder Crag and then King's Howe right at the top there. Right, I'm gonna go back down. Oh, it's really smooth on the top and there's a little puddle. <laughs> so, I'm gonna be careful because it drops off like a little precipice. Ooh. Everyone's obviously done that. Uh, these steps were originally wood, but they've been replaced. I think it was the National Trust that replaced them. Uh, the area and the stone is now the property of the National Trust. The theories are either it's arrived, pushed down here by a glacier and moving slowly on it, or it's just fallen down the mountainside. And upon investigation, it is actually local, so it has fallen down the mountainside. So at some point in the distance past, this would look like a bit like a scene from Raiders of the Lost Ark with that thing tumbling down here. <laughs> the other thing you can see here is the Druid Stone, which is this. Uh, it's not actually that ancient because it was put up by a guy that bought the land around the Bowder Stone. He used to charge people uh, to go up it. So that's the Bowder Stone for us. And now we're gonna just head back to the car. So we're gonna work our way down to the village from here. We're just heading back to Grange now on this path, which is some distance from the road. So it's pretty easy. If you were going to go up the uh, Castle Crag and then drop down and go back to Grange, then you could come up this path from uh, there. And it's probably about probably about a mile and a half or so. Just walking, I found this very, uh, you know, this has been cordoned off, deep excavation work, it says. Unfortunately, the fence is just like <laughs> the padlocked gate isn't really <laughs> effective if you've got a massive hole in your fence. So, just gonna have a look over this rail and see what's there. <laughs> That's a good sign. Woo! Quarry with a sudden drop off. Just walk through the side of this quarry that was cordoned off there. This will take us pretty much back to Grange. There is, as always, a, uh, a car park by the National Trust, so you can go there. I'm just heading back to the car now. So thanks for watching the video. We've seen a few things today. We've seen the uh, Millican Cave. We've been up to Castle Crag, the smallest of the Wainwrights. We've seen the Bowder Stone. So it's quite a compact little area here. There's lots to do. Uh, so if you enjoyed this, just click on the like. And if you want to subscribe, then you'll see more of these videos as I do them.